game. The Sagamihara Stabbings The Sagamihara Stabbings were committed on the 26th of July 2016 in Midori Ward, Sagamihara, Kanagawa Prefecture, Japan. 19 people were killed and 26 others were injured, 13 severely at a care home for disabled people. The suspect was a 26-year-old man identified as Satoshi Uematsu, a former employee of the care facility. Uematsu surrendered at a nearby police station with a bag of knives and was subsequently arrested. The attack was described as one of the worst crimes committed on Japanese soil in modern history. Satoshi's father was an elementary school art teacher and Uematsu had trained and worked as an elementary school teacher as well. He lived in his house with his parents, but they moved away at some point and he remained there alone. He resigned from working at the facility in February 2016 after having been employed there for three years. Neighbours expressed surprise that he had allegedly committed the murders. He was described as friendly, outgoing and a good man. However, some reported that his personality had undergone a change at some point during his employment at the facility. Letter and Statements In February 2016, Uematsu attempted to hand deliver a letter to Tadamori Oshima, the Speaker of the House of Representatives of Japan. At Oshima's home in Tokyo but was prevented from doing so by security. He returned the following day and this time left the letter with the security guards. Uematsu's letter appealed for the legalization of ending the lives of those multiple, with multiple disabilities in cases where it was requested by the guardians and asked for Oshima, Oishima's assistance in delivering his message to Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. In it he wrote I envision a world where a person with multiple disabilities can be euthanized with an agreement from the guardians when it is difficult for the person to carry out household and social activities he also wrote that the killings of the disabled would be for the sake of Japan and world peace as well as to benefit the global economy and prevent World War 3 after signing his name, the letter proceeded to the detail of offer to target two facilities housing the disabled, possibly a reference to the two residential buildings in which he later committed the crime, and went on to appeal for certain conditions in exchange for committing the act. In the first half of the message, Uematsu said he could kill 460 people, however, in the second half, the number he gave was 260. He added the staff would be tied up to keep them from interfering, but that they would not be harmed. The act would be swift, and afterwards he would turn himself in. At the end of the letter, latter half of the letter, he signed his name again. This time, his address, telephone number, and the name of his employer. At some point, the letter was handed over to Tokyo Police, who contacted the police in Sagimahara. During this time, Frame Uematsu posted to his Twitter account that he expected he might be arrested. He had previously posted tweets about Japan being ravaged by radiation poisoning and AIDS. Later that month, after his letter was brought to the attention of Sagimahara's authorities, he was arrested, detained, questioned and then involuntarily committed to a psychiatric hospital for two weeks. However, he was released on the 2nd of March after doctors deemed that he was not a threat. In his letter and in statements made after turning himself in, Uematsu explained that he was saving from unhappiness both the severely disabled and those who believed 
who he believed were burdened with maintaining their lives. Legal Proceedings On the 20th of February 2017, Uematsu was found mentally comp competent to stand trial. On the 24th of February 2019, Uematsu was charged with 19 counts of murder, 24 counts of attempted murder, 2 counts of illegal confinement causing injury, 3 counts of illegal confinement, 1 count of unlawful entry, and 1 count of violating the swords and firearms control law. Uematsu's defence team said they would they plan to argue that he was mentally incompetent at the time of the crime due to the effects of marijuana. On 23rd of December 2019, Uematsu said he would admit to the crime during the trial, saying that denying the charges against him would be quibbling and make the trial too complex. On the 8th of January 2020, Uematsu pleaded not guilty to the stabbings. On the 17th of February 2020, the prosecution announced that the death penalty was officially sought against Uematsu, saying the rampage was inhumane and that left no room for leniency. On the 16th of March 2020, Uematsu was sentenced to death by the Yokohama District Court having previously said he would not challenge any verdict or sentence. On the 30th of March 2020, his death sentence was finalised as he withdrew automatic appeal to the upper courts. Reactions Yoshide Suga, the Japanese Chief Cabinet Secretary at the time, acknowledged that the attack was a very heart-wrenching and shocking incident in which many innocent people became victims. He also said the Ministry of Health, Labour and Welfare would investigate ways to prevent a similar incident from occurring again. A number of Japanese news outlets ran editorials calling the stabbings a hate crime. By September 2016, little information had been released about the victims of the attack. Reuters wrote, that this would do, was due to Japanese culture and stigma being less accepting of physically and cognitively impaired persons. The care home was, has been demolished on 13th of September 2016. The governor of Kanagawa prefecture, Yuji Kuroiwa, said the facility would be rebuilt. The Uriyong Massacre A man named Wu Bun Kun on the date of April 26, 1982 went on to commit one of the most gruesome murder massacres in modern history. Wu had an argument with his living girlfriend Chun Mai Soon on the afternoon of 26th of April 1982 after he had woken after she had woken him by fl swatting a fly on his chest enraged he left the house and went to the police state po the police station where he reportedly reported for duty at 4 p.m. according to early reports he began drinking heavily the right witnesses later stated that Wu did not appear drunk during his rampage and according to local officials he would have been unable to cover four kilometers, approximately 2.5 miles, of difficult rocky terrain while intoxicated. At 7.30 p.m. Wu returned home, punched and kicked his girlfriend and smashed the furniture before making his way to the reservist armory and gathering several weapons consisting of two M2 carbine rifles, 144 to 180 rounds of ammunition and seven hand grenades. Some reports stated that the other officers were at a meeting and therefore man he managed to grab the weapons unnoticed, though others mentioned that he had intimidated the guards to gain access. 
At approximately 9.30pm, Wu shot his first victim and entered the local post office, where he killed three phone operators and cut off the telephone lines. He next went to Ton Tarongi, where he threw a grenade and shot passers-by in the marketplace, killing six people. He also wounded Chun Mao Soon, who would, had given who had gone to investigate after hearing shots in the village. From that point on, he proceeded from village to village, taking advantage of his position as a police officer to gain entry to the houses and shoot their inhabitants. At 10.30 p.m., Wu took 18-year-old Kim Ju Dong hostage and moved to Ong Ye Ri where he ordered Kim to get him a soft drink for, from a grocery store owned by 52-year-old Shin Wei Du. After getting what he asked for, Wu immediately killed Kim and then attacked the store owner and his family. Shin Wei Du managed to escape after being shot in the leg, though his wife and son, Wan Jun, and his daughters, Chang Sun, and Su Jong were killed. Wu continued shooting at the marketplace, killing a total of 18 people in that village, before making his way towards Pyeongchung Ni. At Pyeongchung Ni, he shot a family of four in their beds and went to a house where a wake was in progress. When the owner of the house saw the armed policeman and asked what had happened, Wu explained that there was an alert as North Korean agents had been spotted. The man invited Wu into the house for dinner, during which the latter complained about his small salary and his transfer from Busan to the countryside. Wu eventually began shooting at the guests after one of them had remarked that his ammunition did not look real. He killed 12 people in the house and further 8 in the streets, thus leaving a total of 24 dead people dead in Pyeongchang Ni. Although police were alerted within minutes of the first shots fired, it took them an hour to gather a team of 37 officers to search for the gunmen and the National Police Headquarters in Seoul were not informed until 1.40 a.m. Around that time, just four kilometers away from the police station in Kurung Yu, Wu found refuge in a farmhouse belonging to a 68-year-old Su In Su, who he told that he was chasing a communist infiltrator and that the family should gather in the main room the house so he could protect them. When the family gathered at his request, he held them hostage. Two hours later, police eventually caught up with him, and as forces closed in, Wu detonated two grenades, killing himself and three of his hostages. Su himself survived, gravely injured. Four rounds of ammunition and one hand grenade were recovered by police from them inside the farmhouse. Immediate aftermath. When the rampage finally ended, 55 people and Wu himself were dead, while 36 others were wounded, six of them seriously. One of the injured, a child who had been shot, died on May 8th, bringing the number of people killed by gun, the gunman to 56. At that time, 35 people were still being treated in hospitals in Jinju and Masan. Chun Mao Soon later said that her boyfriend suffered from an inferiority complex and had been bothered by villagers' comments on their living together unmarried. Later on, the provincial chief of, the, of police was suspended and four other officers were arrested for negligence of duty. Aftermath. The interior minister of South Korea Su Chung-wa and the National Police Chief 
the young Moo offered to resign as a form of atonement for Wu's rampage. Su Chung Hua, being held responsible for the incident by President Chong Du Huan, led his office down on April 29th and Ro Tai Wu was appointed Interior Minister. A special parliamentary team was formed consisting of 19 parliamentarians and led by Home Affairs Committee Chairman Kim Chung Hu to investigate the shooting and its disastrous handling by the police. Furthermore, the South Korean cabinet decided to pay compensations to the victims and their families. Wu had served in the Kore South Korean Marines until 1978. In December 1980, he was hired by the National Police in Busan and settled in the village of Tokok Kri in December 1981 after being transferred to the local police station in Kung Yu. His list of victims included Jun Unsuk, 23 years old, Son Jin Tai, 26 years old, Gang Pang Im, 61 years old, Choi Bun Yi, 71 years old, Jun Jung Jun, 36 years old, Bek Jung Hag, wife of Jun Jung Jung. 36 years old. Lee Chun Su, 50 years old. Sun Jung Hee, 50 years old. Yun Baik Am, 59 years old. Lee Pan Su, 50 years old. Mun Su Yi, 44 year old wife of Lee Pan Su. Son Won Jung, 51 years old. Shin Su Jung, nine year old daughter of Shin Wei Do. Shin Chang Sun, 13 year old daughter of Shin Wei Do. Park In Jil, 42 years old. Choi Jung Yu, 40 year old wife of Park In Jil. Park Kyung Suk, 19 year old son of Park In Jil. Park Jai Cho, 14 year old son of Park In Ju. Park In Ju, Park Hyung Suk, 8 year old daughter of Park In Ju. Seoul Jun Sun Jung, 49 year old. Young Yu Sun Ja, 19 year old daughter of Seoul Sun Ju. Kim Wal Sun, son. 20 years old. 28 years old, sorry. Jun Dalbai, 18 years old. Sin Yong Lyon, 43 years old. Yu Jong Sun, 19 years old. Jin Pil Lee, 19 years old. Jun Yong Jil, 37 year old. Kim Ju Dong, 18 years old. Jin Il Im, 48 years old. Park Gab Jo, 38 years old. Park Myung Leon, 32 years old. Park Mai Hee, 14 years old. Su Hyung Su, 27 years old. Su Jung Su, 22 year old brother of Su Hyung Su. Park Jong Dug, 43 years old. Jeon Bak Sun, 63 years old. Park Bang Sun, Bong Sun, 41 years old. Ham Su Nam, 51 years old. Lee Ta Sun, 46 years old. Lee Sun Tu, Sun Du, 46. Han Myung Gyu, 53 years old. Choi Gyeong Jag, 43 years old. 
So Un Sag, 20 year old son of Choi Kyung Sek Jag. Mun Byung Hyung, 8 years old. Mun Se Jung, 2 years old. Gwak Gidal, 43 years old. Gwak Juil, 14 year old son of Gwak Gidal. Park Sun Dyuk, 41 year old wife of Gwak Gidal. Jo Il Sun, 56. In other areas, Hu A Jug, 23 year old, killed in Yok Girai. Jo Gwai Nam, 54 year old, killed in Jok Jun Ni. John Myung Liel, 59 year old, killed in Bongok Ri. Ha Kyung Jai, 5 year old. Yong Liang, Yu Liang, sorry, age unknown. Jo Young Dog, 46 year old, in Hamlin Gun. And also his own suicide. Thank you very much for watching. And for those who've subscribed, I also thank you very much. Any support is much appreciated. I hope that I can continue to provide you with some useful entertainment and also some information you can learn from. Did you enjoy that? If you did, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe and hit the notifications icon so you can see when I've done another video. And I want you to tell all your friends about me. Until next time, I am Sir Shudder. See you soon. Be safe, be cool.